So let's pick up our full study with number 25, Psalm 69.5. And I guess see how foolish we are. Never thought in the realm that foolishness abounds in our lives, my life. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm not ashamed to confess it. Psalm 69, verse 5. O oh God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins, plural, are not hid from thee. Wasn't well, that remarkable? We can hide being a fool from others, but we can't hide our foolishness before God. So, in the act of foolishness, God is recording, God is seeing. And there is no hiding from God. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And we need to realize, that according to the Bible, that sins, even though we don't know innocency, we're still guilty. And we've done 25 of these so far, and some foolishness are not me. Thank God. Some foolishness is. Psalm 73, 3. If there's anything that God does not want us to be, he does not want us to be foolish. He wants us in all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the holy. That is fearing God, that's departing from evil, and that's doing right. And so far we've seen foolishness is not doing right. Psalm 73, verse 3. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So, here's a, not a Christian in the Old Testament, a son of Asaph. Here's a man that's right with God. And he's looking at people who are not right with God, who are wicked. And he became envious. He came, you know, look at their lives. Their lives are so wonderful and so great. They got riches. They got friends. They look like they're having a high, high, high times. Yet, we see that the wicked is foolish. Foolish people are ones that will not put their faith and trust and obey God. We already see the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. So I can safely say that fools are in hell. They have not obeyed God. They had not had any regard to God and his words. And that's foolish. A man that is not a fool is a man that will regard God, will listen to God, will obey God. That's not foolish. That's life eternal. And I'm, I'm trying to think of my brain right now before we move to the next one. Um, yeah, I can't think right now. But sometimes fools look like they are doing so well. And it looks like Christians suffer. But in the end, they burn the fools, and we live. And notice the envy is not to the it's not the fool. It's the man that is serving God and trying to do right. Stupidity is one that will not obey God. It is stupid to tell Jesus, I'm not going to put my faith in trust, in, and I'm going to rely on anything else if nothing else. It is stupid to say, oh, there's no God, I'm an atheist, when the Bible says already, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And being wicked here is equal to the foolish of this passage. We ought not look at the unsaved and say, oh, how great their lives are. Because this world is just only temporal. We have not faced the judge yet. Saved or lost, you're going to face the judge. And then those that are of God will go off into eternity of life, of joy, 
of peace, no sin, brand new bodies. And those that are wicked will go off into a lake of fire that burneth forever. That's where fools are. There's no envying. Because Jesus says, set thy afflictions on things above, not things on the earth. And when we look at the unsaved man, we're setting our afflictions. We are coveting. Things are going to burn up. Things that have no value, that are vain in the eyes of God. Psalms 73, 22. So foolish was I, and ignorant, I was as a beast before thee. And the same subject of Psalm 73, same subject of Asa. He writes these verses, and go back and read them. All the, these people of no value to God, these people that won't listen to God, the people that will not go to the temple, the people that will not bring sacrifices. And if they do, they bring it with a wicked heart. And look how well they're doing. Look how great their lives are. are. Oh, I wish I could be in their stead. And From verse 3, the foolish is the wicked, to verse 22, I have become the foolish now. And the foolish one here right now can be a Christian. When we look at people of the world, when we look at unsaved people, we say, oh, if I, oh, look how great, oh, what terrific, how they doing. And I don't have no Christian friends because I want to do right in the Bible. And they don't want to do right. Oh, I've got so many bills. I've got so many troubles. I've got so many problems. Well, so does everybody else. Some people are good at hiding. And then if they do have kind of worldly joy, it's temporal. I mean, the drugs can only last as much as they can afford them, and there will be no drugs in the lake of fire. Alcohol, it, it, it rubs out in the morning, and sometimes you barf it out, according to the Bible, vomit, as long as you can afford that. But there will be no alcohol in the eternal life. Smoking, that just ruins your body. Makes your lungs bad. Makes your breath stink. Your clothes. It's a horrible thing. There will be no smoking in glory. And I don't know if you smoke in hell with the fire. And yet, the foolishness that they are in of their wickedness... It is foolish for us to envy them when we're going to a place where we will have no more sin, no more troubles, no more sorrows, no more problems. Love, joy, peace forever. To be ever before God the Father and, and Jesus Christ the Son for glory forever. And at this point of foolishness is when we take our eyes off heaven. We take our eyes off Jesus Christ. And we look to riches, we look to wealth, we look to material things. That foolishness and the material things is a sin that needs to be repented of and get right. Psalm 74, 18. Psalm 74, 18, where these are in order. Unless I made a mistake, but it's pretty much in order. Psalm 74, 18, remember this. Uh-oh, remember. Something not to forget. That the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name. That's an interesting one. And this one still may happen in, in the Christian life. That old nature may... Call upon God's name in vain. Which is one of the, the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not use the name of the Lord in vain. Listen, we got to think today, OMG, that's God's name in vain. GD is a God's name in vain. When you call upon Jesus Christ because you cracked your knuckles open, that's a vain thing. Oh, God is a vain thing. And we see vainness in, in Hollywood. You know, you got a family, they're sitting down before an artificial table with artificial fruit, and they're going to sit down for a meal, and someone says, let's ask for grace. And if someone says a prayer, that's vain. They're not meaning a prayer. It's probably written down. That's vain. 
when we have a false religion and a false worship of Jesus Christ, that's vain. You know, Jesus Christ is my wafer and, and the cup I drink from, that's vain. A Jesus Christ that came over to North America to a bunch of people you can't find in archaeology, that's vain. And foolish people have blasphemed thy name. Taking the Lord's name in vain is foolish. There are people who run around call themselves Jehovah Witnesses and have nothing to do with Jehovah. That's taken in vain. There are people who pray, Our Father. And they have no regarding the Father don't know them. That's in vain. It's foolishness. And then realms right there to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Wash that filthiness out of the way. Psalm 74, 22. Arise, O God. That'd be a second Advent passage. Plead thy own cause. Remember how the foolish man reproaches thee daily. <clears throat> and it's the same context of verse 18. God, will you get up and judge? Man in his wicked sea is just running around rampant. And if the Lord tarries any longer, and he may, he will, it's only going to get worse because the sinning of man and the sinner that he is, that has sinned and will sin, is only going to magnify itself more and more and more. And it's against God. Because we were not created to lust. We were not created to lie. We were not created to commit sin. We were created. Uh, we were created. I can't say the word now. We were created. According to Revelation chapter 4. For uh, Let me turn there. You can turn there too. Revelation chapter 4. This is the whole realm of man. Why am I here? I got the answer. I remember one time as a little boy, I told my mom, I said, Mom, I said, when I was born, did I come with instructions? Little boy, I said, Mom, oh, no, no, son, no, you didn't. The Bible. My mom wasn't saved then. She's saved now. But Revelation 4, 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory and honor and power. For thou has created all things. For thy pleasure they are and were created. So when we step out, saved or lost. And we magnify anything but God and Jesus Christ. We're foolish. The main intent of Adam was to glorify God. Boy, how far we come? When was the last day that you or I had one day without sin? Never. Never. It's a shame. So, arise, O God. How the foolish man reproaches thee daily, charging God with fault. It's God's fault. Why did God allow this? That's a sin. If God was a loving God, he would have stopped those floods. He would have stopped that tornado. He would have stopped that child from dying. It's not God's fault. And when you give God that, that in chargement, that, that plea against him, you are doing foolish. You have not understand. It is not God that has caused all this trouble. It is because man told God, I'm going to disobey you and I'm going to eat that fruit that you so warned me about before I ate it. And if we were to obey God and his word completely, which we don't, 
because we are sinners. Now let's look at Genesis 3.11 on this. Genesis 3.11. I'm going to tell you something right now. Genesis 3 is the chapter. Genesis chapter 3 is the chapter, though you don't see it. Genesis 3 is why we have hospitals. Why we need a police department, a National Guard, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. This is why we need doctors and nurses. This is why we have Band-Aids. This is why there's diabetes and cancer and tornadoes and hurricanes and death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Adam sinned by his disobedience, and we are born in the nature of Adam, whether we like it or not, whether our shriek tells us go blame mom or grand grandma, that's not the case. We are what we are. We're sinners. What are you going to do with that? Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. He is the way, the truth, and the life. What are you going to do with that? Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. And he said, Who told you that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree which I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? In Genesis chapter 2, God told him that thou shalt not eat. Look, we'll go over there. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse number uh, 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden, and dress it to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, apples, pears, plums, figs, grapes. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. The wages of sin is death. There it goes. God forewarned. We are in a day and age today that God has, has forewarned us that the possibility, you know already, if you're going to drink that alcohol, you have a great chance of being an idiot that night. And you may have the possibilities of getting in a car and ruining your life and someone else's life. That's been proven out through history. And it's been proven out through history that drugs will kill your mind. And your thoughts. And it has been proven through history, and even the Surgeon General puts a warning on a pack of cigarettes. It is a warning that life has that man dies because the consequences of what he does against God is not what God has done against us. And when you blame God for the death, You've done foolishly, foolishly. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, verse number 20. Now we're going to read about a man in 20 and 21 and 22. This is not the subject of Psalm 74, 22. This is complete opposite. This man lost his children in one day. He lost his animals, his asses, his camels, his whatever he had. They were stoned. They were killed. Men died under this man. Looks like maybe one afternoon. And with the result of all the trials and troubles and fire coming down from heaven and a whirlwind taking out his children. This is the result of a non-foolish man who loves the Lord. Job 1.20 Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall return thither. The Lord has taken... The Lord gave... The Lord has taken away 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, look at that. We saw that in Psalms 73, 3, where, where people despise the name of the Lord. Uh, excuse me, Psalm 74, 18. We saw people despise the name of the Lord. We see people despising the Lord in 74, 22. And Job says, listen, God gave and God take it away. Look at the blessing first. God gave me those camels. God gave me those, those children. God gave me those, those uh, asses. God gave me the, those servants. They're his. What I got to complain about. And we're not even finished. Verse 22. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. That's one of our foolishness going to come up. And you referenced that too. I'm going to write this down. You referenced that to what we're studying right now. 74, 18, 22. Making my own notes here. I apologize. So, uh, Job is not a Psalm 74, verse 18, 22. He didn't look up to the heavens and say, oh, oh, oh. he said, well, Lord gave him. He took him away. And that ought to be our attitude. And when it comes to death, it says in Thessalonians, you know, we're not not to cry because, you know, feelings. And when someone dies in the Lord, we, there's that hope. But we ought not to go cursing God. The person died. The loss happened because of the wages of sin is death. It's that plain and simple. In Job chapter 2, verse 9. His wife come up to him and says, smoke, you know. Let's see, where is, where is it? Verse 9. Then said his wife, Job's wife, unto him, Job, does thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. There's a Psalm 74, 18 and 22. I had to look at the verses. There it is. Job is not a Psalm 74, 18 and 22. But his wife is. Go ahead and just curse God. He's, he's the problem. He's the trouble. But he, Job, said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. We're going to deal with that fool pretty soon. So already we've seen two fools we're dealing with. It's one fool in Psalms chapter 74. Reproaching God's people. And then reproaching the name of God. And we have a man who is not doing that. And we have his wife who is doing it. And he says, Thou speakest one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? There's the, there's the, the positive first. And shall we not receive evil? The negative. Just like he said in verses 20 and 21. Now watch. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So let's go back to Psalm 74. Psalm 74. We already done it. Yeah. Yep. And number 13. All this Job sin not with or charge God foolishly. Job 122. That's that's number 13. And but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. That was number 14. Boy, I remember I don't remember doing that. I hope it wasn't skipped. Oh, there's other videos you can go back and find. So here we are in Job 74, verse 18. Remember that the enemy which shall reproach us, O Lord, that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name. Job didn't do that. Thank God he was right. And then in 22, I'm trying to find my place. Arise, O God, plead thy own cause. Remember how the foolish man approaches thee daily. 
That's Job's wife. And the Bible remarks that Job did not sin, implying the implication is that his wife did. And notice what it says here, people do it daily. There are people who are living who had a death in a family or had some kind of tragedy in their life, and they blame it all every day. They wake up blaming God, and they don't move on. That's a sin. That is reproaching God, and that is foolish. It's a sin. I've had grandparents pass on, go, go into glory. I've had family members die and probably go off into hell. You have a time of grieving. You have a time of grief, and you're just sorrowing. And it's not God's fault. It's for sometimes it was better for them to move on. And you move on with your life, and you grow in the Lord, and you try to witness to people, try to find more people that will believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. You find other people who need to grow, and you just grow. You, you get out of that. Satan, Job's wife, the curse God. And it wasn't the integrity of Job. Job's like, hey, it happens. What am I going to do about it? Get angry with God? That'd be a sin, adding upon a sin. Psalm 75, verse 4. What good would it do for you to get angry with God? You know, I said it unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked lift not up the horn. That's pride, strength, horn in the Bible, strength. So, one of the things we're supposed to do, as ones that study the Bible, we are to rebuke the foolish for their foolishness and tell them to not get off. And guide them and comfort them and strengthen them to come out of the foolishness. The Bible implies right here that as far as a foolish man, no longer be foolish. Stop it. Grow. And the fact is that the Bible says, I said to the fools, deal not foolishly. There is the implication of scripture that you do not have to be a fool your entire life. You can get out of foolishness. There's a way, there's a truth, and there's a life. And that is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Psalms 92, 6. Psalms 92, 6. And there are other videos in this, this part of the fool. Go back and, and review them. I give you permission to, to, to save these, copy them. Uh, download, give them to friends, use them, put them on CDs, whatever it is to get the glory of the Word of God out. I give you all permission. If you abuse it and you mishandle it, that's between you and God. That would be foolish. I know what I've said, and I, I speak as a fool most of my time, but you want to be so foolish to ruin these videos? That's between you and God. But, I mean, you want the glory of God and all that? Free. Get them out. Don't charge anybody. Just do it free. Give them to friends. Give them to a fool that you know. Say, hey, you don't have to call them a fool. Say, hey, I get this great study. It's about a fool. Maybe God will bless it. Uh, Psalms, what did I say? 92.6. A brutish man knoweth not. Neither does a fool understand this. So let's go verse 4, the paragraph. For thou, Lord, has made me. Glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. O Lord, how great are thy works. And thy thoughts are very deep. A bruised man knoweth not, neither does a fool understand this. What is the context? What is the source that we have here? The works of God. There is no understanding to the foolish man. Though they do not even know the thoughts of God are. Pure, sinless, righteous thoughts. They have no idea what that is. They have no idea what it is to be clean. There have been many times in my life. And I can almost remember the day that I asked Christ into my heart. I can almost, the, the cleanliness that I felt. I don't know what 
you know, April 21st, but I don't remember what time in the afternoon it was. I know it was afternoon. It was that moment when, when I got up and, oh, I felt so clean that day. You ever been, you know, ever been, you know, you're out working and you're sweaty, you're dusty, and you're filthy and you're itchy and you get in that shower and you just clean yourself off and you come out of that shower and like, oh man, I feel like you lost 10 pounds. And there are times in my Christian life when I walked with the Lord and I said, Lord, I, I, I confess the sins and the Lord showed me sins and I confessed them truly with a right heart. I repented to the Lord and just sought the Lord and I felt so clean. And I, at that point, said, sin, no. A fool will never get that. A fool cannot understand sinlessness. And it's a shame when a Christian at this point stands as this foolishness because he's saved, but he's in the world and, and adulterizing himself with Satan in the world. And lavishing in sin, which this is a sin. I have felt cleanness. I have felt holiness. I have felt righteousness. By trying to serve the Lord and do right, and that's a wonderful time. A fool will never feel that. Because he's not seeking to be right. He's not seeking to be clean. He's not seeking God. He wants what he can have now, not later. And this feeling that a fool will never get will be when we finally get to glory and we are in the holiness and righteousness of God. Glory to God, blessed hope, is my aim. It's my glory. Psalms 94, 8. Understand ye brutus among the people, and ye fools, when will ye? Yeah. When will ye be wise? <laughs> again, now we got the implication again. A fool does not have to remain to be a fool any longer. And if you are watching this video and you've been in this study or any other study, and you acknowledge you, you know what, that guy is speaking and he's speaking about me, I'm sorry to say. You can stop it right now. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved from your heart, that Jesus Christ is able, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Or if you are a Christian, you say, man, I didn't realize I'm a fool. <laughs> didn't realize how much sin I still am in, though saved. You can repent and confess your sins. And God is able and just to forgive us of our sins and to wash us to be clean. I am learning things of this study myself. I typed this all up. I read it. And I'm doing it. And I'm still learning because it's the word of God that liveth in us. When will they come to the knowledge of the holy? And most will not ever. Psalms 107.17. Psalms 107, 17. I think we'll finish up today with the last one in Psalms. 33 is the last one in Psalms 107, 17. And then we move to Proverbs. I think we'll take that up next time, Lord willing. Psalms 107, 17. The last fool in Psalms. Fools, because of their transgression. And because of their iniquity, they are afflicted. Let me just ask a plain, simple question. Have you got iniquity? Have you sinned? You're a fool. It's plain and simple. Fools. Because of their in transgression. Transgression is when you cross a line that you should not be crossing. You ever see the signs that say, no trespassing? When I grew up as a child in the street that I live on, there was, there was a power plant, fenced-in area, and the signs say, no trespassing. We would crawl over that fence. At that moment in time, I was trespassing where I ought not to be, and that's a sin. 
And when God tells a Christian, don't do this, and you do it, you transgress. Congratulations, you have reached being a fool. Every Christian in their life, unto death or rapture, have been a fool because of transgression. We've all crossed God's line. He drew the line in the, in the sand, and we crossed it. He, not, he put the chip on his shoulder, and we flung it off. He told us, thou shalt not, we said, we will. Transgression is when Adam, God said, do not eat of that fruit. Adam became a fool. Why? His wife gave him the fruit, and he ate. David became the fool with Bathsheba and Uriah. Solomon, I mean, King Saul became the fool when he went with the witch of Endor. Solomon became the fool when he kept multiplying wives and going off to the gods. Paul was foolish. Paul was foolish. He transgressed. The Holy Spirit told him three times, don't go to Jerusalem. The fool went to Jerusalem. You know, I tell you right now, I'm not going to confess my sins to you. I confess them to Jesus Christ, but we're to confess our faults. I'm a fool when Jesus says, the Holy Spirit says, give that guy a gospel track, and I don't. I am the fool when, when I get a, a, a message or an idea in the middle of the night. I'm the fool that doesn't get up to go write it down. And when I wake up in the morning, I am so foolish to think, oh, I will remember it. And I'll sit here at my desk right here where my chair is, and I'll think, what was that last night? Oh, Lord God, that, Lord, that prayer, Lord God, help me to remember what that was. You fool. You couldn't invest a little time to get up and write it down? So much information that God has given me, I lost because I've been a fool not to write it down. So many times have I sinned against God being a fool because God told me not to do it. And I did it. Isn't that foolish? Look at it. Let's look at it. We want to do right by God. We want to live right by God. And God has set forth in the Bible, do or not to do. And when God says do, we don't do. And when God says not to do, we do. Isn't that foolish? Yes. Read again. Last verse. Fools, because of the transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. So, again, now going back to what we read before, Psalm 74, 22, charging God with fault, it ain't God's fault. When trials and tributes and troubles and, and all kinds of stuff, events happen in our life, it is not because of God. It is because we are the fool. It is because we have transgressed. It is because of our iniquities. If we only will obey God, that will end full. But thank God. For 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God for that verse, because I'm a fool. I hope you see yourself as a fool. Rightfully to get right with God. I hope you know what I mean. And you don't have to be a fool forever by what we've studied tonight. 